Welcome to the kitchen at the Stanley A. Milner Library. I'm Edmonton blogger Linda Huang, and I'm thrilled to help the EPL show off this amazing new space. So the revitalization of the Stanley A. Milner Library has been going strong for a few years now. And I'm just curious, how did you come up with the idea to do a kitchen inside of a library? Because that's a pretty unique concept. A kitchen inside a library is unique. And Edmonton Public Library is known for its innovation and doing things first. And we responded to community consultation when it was mentioned many times in 2015 that customers wanted a space where they could create culinary opportunities, learn food literacy. And we have a highly active foodie community and this will be a great way to connect with that community, with volunteers. It really responds to our strategic directions in terms of EPL being the best place to learn and the best place to create. So we're fulfilling a number of needs that have been identified and again, being that innovative customer oriented organization. I love how open and inviting the kitchen is and I'm wondering if you can tell me more about the space. The EPL kitchen was designed the way we design all the services at the Edmonton Public Library for learning, for experimentation, for curiosity. So this space, 2,100 square feet, located on the second floor of the Stanley Milner Library. It's a beautiful location, so people will be able to come take a class with the Edmonton Public Library, learn about baking, maybe improve their knife skills, but then they'll also be able to take classes from partner organizations as well, all for giving Edmontonians opportunities to learn more about food and nutrition. What type of activities can take place in the kitchen? But we also saw that there was um, need and interest in the community for community space. So thinking about, for example, cultural groups that are looking for a space that they can borrow, they can rent, they can come to, to develop community over food so that they can share food practices as well. That's why the space has been designed to have soft seating, places to socialize, as well as communal tables where people can sit and eat together. I love that we've designed this space for multiple uses, for multiple audiences, but also with flexibility in mind. So the power is in the ceiling, the tables are on wheels, there's only a couple points that are fixed. So we can really adjust how this space is used based on the interest and the need of the people that are using it. So one of the, my favorite parts about this space is that you've really set it up in a way where you don't have to be a cooking expert or a pro and it's sort of welcoming all levels. So I love that. Can you share what your favorite part about the kitchen is? So my, my favorite part is exactly the same part <laughs> as yours. The kitchen was designed with the objective to be kind of a hybrid space between a commercial kitchen an industrial kitchen and a home kitchen. So you have state of the art, exhaust, ventilation, makeup air system. We have baking ovens, commercial, six of them, eight really heavy duty stovetop induction ovens. So those are the commercial aspects of the kitchen. We're able to accommodate 36 participants in our classes. Each one of these stainless steel tables is a working station, fully equipped, and they're furnished with equipment that you would recognize from home. We would like our customers to come in and not be intimidated with tools that they're cooking with. So I've noticed you've got quite an impressive spice rack area, uh, as well as a lot of products that are looking like they're uh, from local producers, local retailers. Can you talk about that? Our spice rack or the shelf is a reflection of our community-led philosophy. So, for example, if you were interested in how to cook with rose harissa, ask us. We have community experts, we have chefs, we'll answer your questions. Not only that, we'll make a whole lesson around those questions and you can register for classes. Can you talk about the different classes that people can take here? Are they virtual, are they in-person, cost, and who's teaching it? So when we're opening this space in the downtown library, we know there'll be live classes here. So people will come in, there'll be an instructor available to them, they'll take a class. But we know we'll also be able to do online classes as well. So from this space, be able to teach classes that people could take virtually at their home. And then maybe there's some hybrid model that would work with that as well. Like the rest of the services that we make at, available at the library, our goal is to make them as accessible as possible. So we hope to have a combination of courses and classes that are free, as well as low cost. And then sometimes when partner organizations are providing a class with EPL, there might be a cost associated. 
You're set up to make a lot of great food here. Is the kitchen a place where people can come and grab some food like a restaurant? While there is space for people to eat together, the primary purpose is not to serve food. So we're not trying to compete with any of the great restaurants that are already available in Edmonton and downtown. We just want to make um, access to the resources that people would need to start learning about food, learning about nutrition more readily accessible. Where can people find more information about this new space? There's great information about the, the kitchen at EPL's website, www.epl.ca slash the kitchen. You can also send an email to the kitchen at epl.ca. So there'll be great opportunities for people to reach out to us. We've been reaching out to partners. We hope to work with all sorts of different organizations as we start to animate, curate, create classes in this space, create opportunities in this space, but we're happy for people to reach out to us as well.